Welcome back to another episode of Corey Golf. This is going to be the episode that I wish I would have seen when I first started golf. When I first started golfing, I would watch the pros on TV, go on Instagram, YouTube, whatever, and I'll look up Rory McIlroy, Justin Thomas, Dustin Johnson, you name the player, I look them up, look at their swing in slow motion, and I would kind of nitpick something out. I'd be like, wow. Personally, like, I really like how down the line, I like how the club shaft would line up with the forearm. So I'd focus on that. I remember I'd look at Cameron Champ, how he'd bring out the club all the way up and do the super shallowing spiraling motion. And I would try to nitpick that. Or how JT would take his takeaway and take it much more vertically than most other players. And I would try and nitpick different things in different swings and like create this perfect swing that in reality was never going to be a possibility. So eventually, I would just pick on one person's swing. And for me, it was Rory McIlroy. For whatever reason, number one player in the world, probably a good swing to try and copy. But my problem was, was I was trying to mimic the impact position and try and get that beautiful ball flight that he can possess. After many years of struggling, I came to learn that it is in fact actually impossible to try and mimic different positions in the swing. Because the swing is simply going to be a chain of events from setup to the back swing through transition impact and follow through. Meaning that how you grip the club, how you set up to the club was going to impact how you go begin your takeaway, how you begin your transition, and ultimately how you begin into impact, which is going to determine the ball flight. I focus too much on, oh, the only thing that matters is how the club moves to the ball, which is actually 100% true. But if you're gonna try and extrapolate that over dozens of rounds a year and try and get consistent lower scores, you're gonna realize that how you actually deliver the club to the impact zone, and the more consistent you can do that, is going to be how you actually can lower your handicap and how you can start shooting lower scores. So now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the positions. P1, 2, 3, all these terms you may have looked at or heard about on YouTube before or from other instructors and realize how can we use these positions to self-diagnose our swing and actually create that repeatable swing and that we all strive for to play our best golf that we know that we are capable of. First position is going to be P1. All P1 is is setup. Some of the common things I want to see with setup uh, this is a 7 iron, so it will change a little bit for the clubs. But you want to have an alignment rod when you're practicing on the range. That will be aiming towards your target line. And I, I like putting a rod right in the middle of my feet. This way I can know where the center of my stance is. And that is going to be where I want the ball to lay. Take this leading edge, lay it right here. So it's going to run parallel to this line, meaning that it's perpendicular to your target line. That way when you have a square face, you can uh, have a better chance of hitting the ball straight. The next position is going to be P2. So moving from P1 to P2, that's going to be when the club shaft is parallel to the ground. And hopefully some of the things we want to see when we hit P2 is the following. So you want to make sure you're not going to sweep it too far inside or too far out away. Look at other videos to see how you deal with that. But when you do get to P2, some things you want to see are this club shaft parallel to this green target line and this front leading edge. You're going to want to see matching your spine angle. If you got it way open, this is going to mean you're going to be hitting your slices. If you've got this thing super shut, facing way more towards the ground, that's where you're going to get your hooks coming from. Next position is going to be P3. So that is going to be when your left arm or your lead arm, if you're one of those weird lefties, right? Sorry, Bubba. Some things you want to see here is this butt of the club shaft. You want to make sure it's going to be pointed roughly towards um, this line right here, where the ball line is. At P3, if you have it way too flat on the outside, you're going to cause you to be a super flat swing, um, which can cause some difficulties from there. Or if you get this club shaft pointed too far behind you, you're not Matt Wolf, hard to swallow pill. Guess what? It's going to be really hard to come and shell that club and deliver it nice and squarely to the ball. So P4 is going to be the top of your backswing, whether you're Tony Fino and it looks like that, or you're John Daly, you know, wrapping all the way around. P4 is going to be simply the top of your backswing. Some of the positions that we want to see here. Uh, most players are going to play from a neutral position, meaning the club is too not, not too far across the line, uh, kind of like a new DeChambeau swing, or like uh, Sergio, he's the opposite, he gets his club super laid off. You can play from those positions, um, but I would say when you turn on uh, any sort of PGA Tour event, I don't know, I would say probably three out of four players at least are going to be at this more neutral, you know, tigress position at the top. Moving down to P5, this is going to be the transition back to left arm parallel. Ideally, you're going to want to see this club shaft, the line where it's pointing out shallowing just a hair, where, it, where your initial swing was pointed more in the vicinity of the ball line, just point it a little more farther out. 
there's a different uh, ways you can get the feels for these, which we'll talk about in future videos. But ideally, a little bit of a shallowing motion will occur here by the vast majority of players, getting this paw aligned, pointed more further out. Now we get back to P6. So on the way down to the downswing, where your club shaft is going to hopefully, or it should be, once again, be parallel to this green line, parallel to your target line. With this leading edge, once again, parallel to your spine angle. P7 is going to be impact. So this is when you're going to want to have the face square to your target. Your weight has shifted forward. Um, that's really all you can mimic um, from a still frame photo. Now P8 is going to be through the follow through when your club shot is parallel to the, uh, the line again. Kind of like you're shaking hands with the target is what you want to see. A lot of people are asking why, why does it even matter what happens after impact? And the answer to that is, well, it does and doesn't at the exact same time. Because once uh, the club has le left the club face, it's nothing you can do with it. But when you're self-diagnosing your swing and trying to figure out what, you, what you're doing right and wrong, it's just going to help illustrate how you, uh, you're tacking up to the ball was, whether it's too shallow, too steep, or perfectly on plane. Just kind of want to make sure you do see this club face actually rolling over. If you see something like this, uh, you obviously know that was a slice of Rooney. But once again, pair with target, club face has rolled over. Emblem, on, emblem of the glove has pointed the opposite way uh, behind you, and you are shaking hands with the target line.